All right, welcome back to TCI headquarters. We are well now just talking about we're like almost a quarter of the way through the season. Seems like it just started. Um, good news is another huge victory for the Tigers. Uh, nice to be relevant again, yeah. isn't it, Will? Yeah, it's just it's nice to see them score points. That's I mean, it. Um, the thing I like about it is you know we get pretty busy once they start scoring like that. All of us do, mm -hmm. and. Uh, you know, as much as we love watching the game, it's good to be busy during the game, you know, as opposed to the last few years where we sort of been twiddling our thumbs waiting for something to happen and went to write and got plenty to write. And that's, that's the beauty of it. I was thinking about that, that the other morning because I, I, you guys don't know our process, but we, if you follow our information, you know, we try to put up articles, especially early in the game, every time Clemson's scoring. So. I'm grabbing the cards from Bart and going back and putting them on the computer and sending them to these guys. I'm like, I hadn't seen the defense play the first half of the last two years. So I don't, I need to go back and watch the game. All these talk about defense, I'm like, I, I got no idea. Uh, see a lot of scrubs in the second half, but that's, yeah. um, that's a different case. But, um, well, you're over there today. Uh, had Dabo, had a couple players, mm -hmm. just the, uh, the mood is, you know, it's so 2019. Yeah, that's a good way to describe it. It is. It's so 2019, and Dabo just seems loose like he did 2019. You can tell he, he you know, it's there's a different demeanor to him. Um, you know, the players, um, they're, they're, they're playing with a lot of confidence, and that comes off in the way they talk to the media. Kane Dean off, by the way, just an excellent speaker. Uh, probably one of the best speakers over around the team. Um, he was really good today. Uh, Jay Haynes, we got to speak to for the first time. Um, he was really good. Wade Woodaz was there as well. Um, and, and, you know, one thing that came through in all those, uh, you know, press conferences, if you will, is, uh, you know, their confidence. You know, you could feel it coming out of them. And, you know, and, and that's, that's where it's different, where the last body language says everything, right? Mm -hmm. And just the last few years, you just haven't seen that kind of body language from the team. Uh, like you're seeing now. Well, Haynes, uh, Dabo <clears throat> came out, I think, Sunday night or one of these nights said, you know, he's the number two guy now. Yeah. Uh, he's different. Yeah, a little bit different back. He had that speed, that flash. Mm -hmm. uh, I think he and Moff are proving to be a pretty good combination. They are. And uh, he was asked about his touchdown today. And, uh, you know, he said that was a play they worked on in practice. So he knew when it came in what they were hoping to do, what they could do. And he said it just opened up. Um, she says he's just an easy hold for him to run through, um, you know, and he's, he says that he's, you know, just kind of taking advantage of his opportunities. Um, you know, he says, you know, they're, they're, it's a real close group, that whole room is. Um, he says competition has been good. Um, he said him and um, Green have, have uh, you know, been able to kind of play off each other because they both kind of had the same injuries mm -hmm. uh, last year, and so they kind of helped each other get through things. and. Then he talks about how Phil is just a great leader, um, a guy who, like, you know, if they have a question, they can go to him. He's really happy to answer it, and uh, he really just kind of leads the whole group. And, and that's something you've seen Phil grow into. He wasn't – Phil still is a quiet kind of guy, but he's got more talkative this year. If you noticed him in the – Well, it's probably years, easier with, with, with number one, though. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, yeah, it, it is. To be talkative. Because that, Will, that was, Will would take over as yeah. a talker. We all know that. That's, that's Will's demeanor. Uh, so Phil's kind of like he's pulled himself out of that shell, if you will, and, and he's really he's soft-spoken guy. It reminds me a lot of C.J. Spiller in the way he his mannerisms are. Um, so if you're being compared to C.J. Spiller in any way, whether it be on the field or off the field, that's a good thing. And he's definitely the way he handles the media and handles his teammates and stuff like this. A lot it reminds me a lot of C.J. Spiller. Denhoff, great game for him. A lot of playing time with mm -hmm. Peter Woods out. You know, Clemson needing to develop that depth at defensive end. Tim Hoffler, um, you know, you hate to have Peter out, but it was probably good for the development of the team to have those two guys get so many snaps. Yeah, and it was. And he talked about that today. Is it, you know, he's one of the guys that would also call out that they had a really good game. He recovered a fumble after the strip sack by T.J. Parker. And um, he was around the ball a lot um, out there. I know you haven't watched it all yet, so you haven't seen it, but you'll see. Uh, 44 was around the ball a lot, like Dabo said, and so was Hoffler. And, you know, he talked about how it was really, you know, how much Chris Rump has done for them coming in and, and helped them with their fundamentals, helped them with their hands, um, you know, just things of that nature that, you know, 
you really need to just get down as a defensive end and, and understand and learn. And he says Coach Rump is just so good about detail and things like that. That's really made him a better player, and it's, made, it's really helped Dean Hoff. If you've seen, he's taken that next step. And you know, Dean Hoff, you know, he, he's yeah, not Dean Hoff, but um, uh, Hoffler. He's got that number 99 jersey on, which is. You know, Cleveland Farrell was a dominant defensive end wearing that number, so every time I see 99 out there, that's who I think of. He also talked about Shaq Lawson, another guy that's mm -hmm. really, you know, I think paid off with, uh, not Shaq Lawson, man, I'm horrible today, aren't I? You know what I meant, though. Yeah. Jaheim Lawson, uh, another guy that is really kind of... You might say Shaq Lawson. <laughs> yeah, it would be. Uh, another guy that's taken a, a next step as well. Dad, we talked about him, too, uh, the other day. So, yeah, those the, that defensive end... Those three guys getting the time they got because Peter Woods on court, was on the field was very beneficial to them. And um, I think it's going to pay dividends down the road for this team. And I know a lot of people are upset, Robert, about the defense. And I'm like, oh, my gosh, they gave up 35 points. It was 59-14. to 14. You know, I mean. It was 45-7. It was 45-7 at halftime. Come on, people. The young people got to play. Right. You know, and as Dabo said, they sacrificed the stats and stuff like that because they want to make sure later in the year – these guys are ready to play. So now they can watch 2016, 17, 18, 19, what are they doing? They were blowing people out. They're like giving up garbage scores on defense. They're playing people, and that helps the development of that team. Exactly. And if you look at, if you look at that 2019 team, the reason it ended up leading the, the, the country in, uh, total, in, in scoring defense was because those guys back in 16 and 17, those, they played, and they – Gave up a lot of points and they were in there and all, but you know what? They got better, and so when they came in and said 2018, they were ready, and that's why that defense was so good in 2018. So you're building for the future, so it's good for those young guys to get out there and play. Dabo hit on something today that he hit on, put on the site last night. He talked about on his radio show, uh, just kind of confirming something that had been speculated. Walker Park's coming back. Yeah. Uh, offensive line, he said the only guy they're expecting right now to lose is Marcus Tate. Mm -hmm. uh, offensive line playing better than they have been. I don't know when the last time they played this well. Mm -hmm. And you think about all those guys, you know, Sadler can step right in there for Tate like he did a couple games ago. Offensive line's doing great. Guess what, guys? These guys are going to be back next year. Yeah, not only that, Dabo indicated today, he says Tate Klobuch's going to be back next year, basically. Yeah, well, he yeah. talked about that on the radio. Yeah, too, so, like, he's... You would think he would. Yeah, you would think he would. And that's kind of what Dabo said, like, and, and, and again, he, he reiterated what he said last night about Walker Parks and those yeah. guys, you know, that... This is a team, an offense that they feel like you know they're going to be, they're going to get better this year, and they're going to basically bring everybody back next year. You talk about Colin Sadler, how he's a guy who now they know they can count on. You get Harry Sewell on that offensive line is a guy they know they can count on. Trent Howard, they feel really good about yeah, that offensive yeah, line. Yeah, senior forward. receiver Sam? Uh That would be zero. Right? Zero. Yeah. <laughs> and so, and they feel like they're going to bring all those guys. What back. you're seeing. It's going to just get better this year, better this year, and next year, look out. Yeah, I, I think the future looks good right now for Clemson. Um, when you look at offense and defense, and you see all these young guys playing. Look, guys, they played, 90, they played 105 people against App State. Then they played 92 people last week against NC State. That is beneficial. Absolutely. People just – you've got to understand that. That's why those, as Robert just mentioned, those 15 through 19 teams were so good. It's because a lot of young people got to play. Mm -hmm. The reason the 2020 season was good, too. I mean, it's not that I was a college play, playoff team, you know, um, and Trevor seen uh, last year. They were a really good team, too, so that was part of it, too. Well, Clemson hadn't had a lot of guys leave in the portal. Mm -hmm. No. Nope. But, you know, you're going to have less guys leaving in the portal if guys feel like they're getting playing time and they're getting developed. Correct. And, and, and what does Clemson do with players that get developed? They go to the NFL. I mean, it's they got the track record that shows that. And so that's another thing, like you said. So not only are they, they they're getting playing time, they're developing, they're getting coached, but they know this leads to them possibly playing on Sundays. So that also all that comes to play, I think. And it's it's uh, now I'm not saying that maybe one or two guys won't enter the transfer portal because you know you're not going to be yeah. perfect. But I think this prevents you from having an asset to this. Well, and the other thing that happens, Stafford talks about some guys get exposed. That's right. And then they, Those they guys might be the guys that go to the court. The, they continue they, to get exposed. Or they say to themselves, man, I'm not as good as I thought I was. So I, maybe I need to stay here a little longer and learn and get coached up. Yeah. You know. All right, I'm going to try to contain this next question. Uh-oh. You know, put a 60-second window on wheel to talk about it. But 
We'll ask. There's a big milestone for Dabo coming up this weekend, and I'll let you talk a little bit about that. Yeah, uh, Dabo's going for win number 100 in the Valley, um, which um, I think is more than any coach that Clemson's had, I believe. You yeah. know, Co- Coach Howard wouldn't have as many because Coach Howard didn't play as many home games mm-hmm. when he was at Clemson. Now, I could be wrong on that, but, you know, regardless, I have to look at the notes on that, but I do know that was approaching win 100 this weekend. And you think about that, that's, that's a heck of a milestone, 100 home wins, you know, and there isn't many losses on that table. I know Davis says there's some bad losses uh, that he tries to forget about. It's easier for him to remember those than to remember all the good ones. But we asked, I asked him, you know, as a follow-up, like, First of all, A, are you, you know, what's it like to get to win 100? He's pretty excited about that. Uh, and B, <laughs> and B, you know, what games were most memorable to him? And, you know, obviously, Cat Zero kicking the field goal against Wake Forest, go to the AC Championship game, um, you know, them beating Virginia here back in 09. You know, you know, right. Yeah, I'm going I'm to write about this later in the week. But, yeah, it's a tease. It's, a, it's, it's, a, it's going to be a good call. I'm, for it. I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm ranking Dabo's best wins. Uh, in his time at best home wins in his time at Clemson. I'll be a follower on the right letter this week. Well, last week, got win number 800, history of Clemson, first ACC team to do that. Mm-hmm. That was like, well, I was here for 600. I was here for 700. <laughs> that was been here for 200. Plus that's, wins. Uh, you know, that's 25% of Clemson's wins in their history. That was when he's been the head coach. And guess what? If he didn't go anything for a while, you know, he, he, might, he might leave this place. Being the guy responsible for you know thirty percent of the wins in the history of the program. Well, think about it this way: they got to hunt, they got seven hundred wins in two thousand twelve, so it took them um, twelve years. So he could get to nine hundred wins probably in twelve years if he stays, and he would only be sixty four. So if he wanted to stay, there's a chance he could probably get to a thousand wins with the. I mean, not him, but get Clemson to the thousand win mark. So that's just remarkable. What big percentage of that he's owned, and obviously that you know. You play more games, you got playoffs, you got ACC championship games, things that didn't used to have right. back in the day. So some of those other teams would have, would have had more wins. But remarkable time to be at Clemson. The good news is after a three-year, four-year down period, now it's like up, coming back up that mountain. And you just gonna, feel we're like going to see yeah. how, how high they can get this season. Yeah, you remember that game on Prices Right with a little – you gotta climb the mountain like this and then had the song, you know, going on. That's kind of what Clemson has been at the last couple of years. And, you know, you just, and you're wondering if they're gonna eh, drop off, you know? And they sort of had a little bit last year, but I think you're starting to see that climb come yeah, back up. Yeah, was telling people to buy stock in Clemson. Yeah. Everybody's been laughing at it. Right now, it looks like it might be a pretty good investment, at least for this year and next year. Well, if they keep playing like they are on offense right now, which, you know, and I get people to understand, you know, people want to, you know, say, well, you know, the, you know, you got your dad and Thomas's out there, and that's that's understandable. Some way fans are, but when you look at last week's game, NC State's a very proud team, a very proud defensive football team too. That's been one of the best in the ACC the last several years, and they got some good defensive players on this year's team. Defense hasn't really been NC State's problem as much as it's been their offense, and um, Clemson just lit them up right from the beginning, and that's why you're like. Holy smokes, or Tom Luganville talking the other day, and he was just talking about how, like, he's like, I'm telling you people, Clemson's offense is legit. He's like, he said, if they play Georgia again, he says, I'm not saying they beat Georgia, he says, but they would definitely be much better, much improved, and he said they would give Georgia a better game than what they gave that first game. So that tells you what people around the country are starting to think about Clemson in this well, offense. I'm in the polls, seeing some post-Saturday – CFP projections out now. Look, I've seen a couple of them that have Miami winning the ACC, but Clemson also in the playoff. Yeah. Uh, so playing know, Alabama, the narrative is very different. I saw one of them Alabama. I saw one of them Penn State. Boy, I wouldn't mind going to either one. Penn State. State. Love to have them come to Clemson, but I'd much rather win the conference and you know be waiting on somebody else. So. You know, what a difference a couple of weeks makes. Um, obviously, we got another game in the Death Valley, another night game, and then next week we have the fun rematch with DJ. So now we've got to see one more game, do it at home again, and then next week we'll talk about can they take it on the road and continue the consistency. Will, anything else you want to hit from the highlights? Yeah, I will say this. Dado Sweeney was a little more long-winded with Stanford than he was NC State. Mm-hmm. So that is, you know, So what does that mean? Well, that means they think Stanford's going to be a little bit probably more problematic for them 
than what they had last week. Because remember, last week was a very short thing. Right. Dabo felt very confident. I think he feels confident this week too. Don't get me wrong. It's not like his time eight. parameter. How long yeah. is today's? Up? Today's was about nine minutes. Last so last week, week was six. four. Four. Okay. Yeah. So so you know you, you see why I'm thinking that. You know he went into a little more depth about some of Stanford's personnel than he did. When they looked good, uh, obviously going up and getting that win last week. So, they did. That was a good win for them. Um, you know. We'll see. See what they look like when they come to Death Valley. It'll be, a, you know, for those fans. I don't know how many fans will come out, but for the team and all that, it'll be pretty. You cool would experience. think they would want to. If you're a fan, you would. This. I'm not saying they'll bring out a bunch because there are tickets available. Um, where last week NC State sold out their allotment, and obviously App State did the week before. So there, there'll be there's tickets available, but you got to imagine first time going and you're coming to one of college football's Memphis, Death Valley. You're coming just, to God's country. Yeah, mm-hmm. you're coming to God's country. Of course, I there's mean, a hurricane coming through. So we'll, oh, yeah. Hopefully that'll get through. Hopefully that doesn't come it's through be, or goes actually out. Actually, may come right through Clemson. It's supposed to come through oh, maybe on Friday, but by Saturday. Oh, it'll be a tropical storm, storm then. It'll not? be tropical. We'll see how all that You goes. know what? I'm not going to complain about it because we need the rain. We do absolutely <laughs> need the rain. I'm done watering my grass. <laughs> uh, all right, guys, that's a recap, a little bit of talk about the big victory, a little bit just talk about where the program is, and uh, we'll hit the highlights from the interviews today. Stay tuned to the Clemson Insider for the most complete coverage of Clemson football, Clemson athletics, and recruiting. Hey, Tiger fans. Make sure you go follow the Clemson Insider for the best coverage of Clemson athletics and recruiting. Nobody does it better.